Hi and welcome back to my tutorial series on how to play Victory Games Pacific War, the struggle against Japan, 1941-1945. This is part of the... this tutorial covers the Savo Island uh, engagement scenario. Just want to give a quick uh, look at the typical information found on a naval unit. In this case, uh, this illustration is from the rule book itself. We can see the class, name class, is the Omaha. We can see that it has uh, its pennant number is light cruiser number two. It has an anti air strength of one. The silhouette is at the bottom, showing the uh, depicting the ship itself. There's an activation point cost in the upper right-hand corner um, on the front, and this has to do with the uh, more advanced strategic rules. And it also has a hit capacity, which is the number of hits it can take before it sinks. On the back of the counter, we have various numbers and symbols. There's the anti-naval gunnery strength at uh, three three different ranges long medium and short we also have a T which is the anti-naval torpedo strength and B is its bombardment strength AS stands for the anti-submarine strength the values or whatever uh, X's indicate that the ship contains no capability in that area so the Omaha cannot fire any torpedoes at any range nor does it have an anti-submarine strength. On the left hand side where the gunnery is it has three uh, numerical values at long range it can fire with a 0 4 which indicates that you have to roll a zero on the ten-sided die uh, which ranges from zero to nine and then you have to subsequently roll a zero to four in order for that unit to score a hit. The middle number at uh, medium range on the left hand side is a zero so it has basically it has to roll a zero on the um, um, combat resolution table and the short range is a 2 so it has to roll a 0, 1, or 2 on the combat results table to score have a chance to score any type of damage now the middle and short range even if you do roll you may not uh, you may not score anything because it's basically 10% or 30% chance based upon which numbers you roll um, I guess it's a what five percent chance or something on the long range of hitting anything. So anyway, just wanted to give a quick uh, view of what the symbology is on each naval unit. This scenario does not use the map per se. However, it will. It just uses the naval combat display uh, chart. However, the battle does occur in the Guadalcanal hex. So that's just for reference, and that's where this engagement will take place. Okay, let's get started. We're going to be doing the engagement scenario number two from Pacific War. It's called Sabo Island. Say so it should take about 15 minutes. There's only one player, and that's a Japanese player. Like I said before, there are no maps being used, just the uh, naval combat display. And the game link should just uh, include the one naval combat cycle, which I believe is composed of. Oh, uh, let's see. Yeah, I don't have the reference here. Uh, I think it's composed of. I'm not sure what they call them, but I think it's three rounds. Let's see, special rules. The Japanese have achieved surprise for the naval combat. 
begin with naval combat phase one. Okay, they're called phases. Only the Japanese can bid withdraw. The scenario, scenario ends after naval combat phase three. <clears throat> Lighting conditions are night. And I've already showed you where the um, historical naval battle occurred. So, here we have victor conditions. The player wins if the Japanese sink the Allied Amphibious Transport. I don't know if I have that on the camera, but... That's it right there. Still not on the front. There we go. I'm using autofocus, so I'm sure that it will um, continually mess up throughout the entire uh, tutorial series. Uh, let's see. They have to sink the amphibious transport. The player loses if the Allies sink two or more Japanese naval units in the Allied and amphibious uh, assault ship uh, is not sunk. Any other results a draw. Now, I played the game a couple times with the official Japanese setup and the Allied setup, and for some reason I just really wasn't uh, happy with the results. So, I made a few modifications. I went and looked up uh, various orders of battle for this particular engagement, and I've come up with one which I feel is a little bit closer to his history regarding the naval units, but I don't know if it will play out historically. So we'll have to wait and see. Um, according to the rules on naval combat, um, let's see. According to the rules on naval combat, the Allies cannot. Huh, I finally remembered. The Allies cannot fire or return fire, whatever. Um, during the first two naval phases because they do not have surprise. The Japanese have surprise throughout the entire scenario which means if you, let, uh, if you go to the naval combat rules the first two phases of naval combat only the surprised player can fire. So there will be two rounds without any kind of uh, naval allied naval return fire and in the third and final naval combat phase, both sides can fire. In this scenario, the Allies cannot withdraw. There is an option to withdraw from combat. And the battle will occur at close or at short range because it is restricted waters. So it's a nighttime scenario, which only really affects. Um, let's see. I guess I'm going to have to refer to the actual rules, not the scenario rules. That'll make things a lot easier. Bear with me. Uh, we have amateur, it's amateur film night here. Okay. Once it's determined that a uh, naval combat will take place in a hex, begin the naval combat phase one. Each player takes four naval units from his engaged task force on the naval combat display. If a player has fewer than four naval units in his task force, he places all that he has. Then the players will determine the current range. This is, uh, like I said, going to occur at short range because it's a nighttime scenario. Let's see. If either player, if either player has surprise, only the player that can fire in this segment. Only that player can fire in the segment. If neither player has surprise, both can fire. Each naval unit fires individually at a target with gunnery and or torpedoes using the strength on his counter appropriate to the range. The same enemy naval unit can be the target of more than one friendly firing unit. If a unit fires guns and torpedoes, it must declare which it is firing first and both attacks must be directed at the same unit. The second firing cannot be withheld in the event that the first firing eliminates the target and blah 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 so we do the same thing in naval combat phase two except the allies cannot withdraw and then we go to naval combat phase three where both sides can fire uh, and so on and so forth in the first two phases each player will commit four naval units or must commit four naval units And in the second and third uh, 
combat phases, you will put the remaining ships, well, on the second combat phase, you'll put the remaining uh, ships that you have on the uh, display. Uh, combat is pretty much pick a target and shoot. And let's see, at the end of the naval phase three, the advantage player can withdraw. So anyway, nighttime, the only thing I see nighttime having an effect uh, is what range you will start based upon, which range you'll start at based upon the type of water that you're in, such as open water, you can start at long range, at medium, at n and medium at night. We're in restricted, so it's going to be short and short regardless. And since only the Japanese player can uh, withdraw, I guess he'll make that, if he wants to pull out to medium range, then only he can uh, do so. So anyway, I think we're ready. Um, and I guess we'll give it a whirl here. So, in the first naval combat phase, I have to allocate four ships each. So, I think we're going to go ahead and put Japanese Aoba, and forgive my pronunciation of uh, any and all names. Um, I'm an English speaking um, person, and I don't even do that very well. Okay, and we're going to also put up the Furotaka. And I think we'll go ahead and do the Takeo, which I think was the flagship, perhaps. And I think we'll run out the destroyers. Let me see what they have. Pardon me. They have good torpedo strength. So we'll bring them out. Okay, the Allied player must allocate four ships. Of course, we're not going to allocate the... Uh, amphibious transport right at the moment. So we're going to go ahead and put out the Portland. Well, actually, we're going to put out the Fletcher class destroyer, the Atlanta, it's another Atlanta, but I'm not sure what the actual ship was, but they're both basically Atlanta class. Atlanta class, um, ships and the Portland I, I don't have a St. Louis class ship in this counter mix and the Portland is a part of the New Orleans class I believe and I guess we'll put out a cruiser put out another Portland so I'll take the DD put it back over here the rest of these are not in this first combat cycle now, I wonder if any of that showed up uh, clearly or not. If it did, great. If it didn't, I apologize. All right, so the Allies will not get to fire in this particular uh, phase. So, we'll start with the Japanese player. We roll a 10 sided die, like I said, um, 0 through 9, with 0 being the lowest die roll, 9 being the highest. There are not a lot of modifiers. The ones that there are are usually optional. So the only modifiers we would really have um, I don't know, we really just don't have any naval modifiers to begin with. Venery and torpedo strength modifications, optional rule, night battle cycles only. If the Allies do not have strategic initiative, add one to all Japanese gunnery and torpedo strengths. If the Allies do have strategic initiative, add one to the gunnery and torpedo strengths of the Allied. If the Ally, uh, Japanese do have strategic initiative, subtract one from all Allied gunnery and torpedoes. So let me see, what are they saying here? If the Allies don't have it, add one to the Japanese gunnery torpedoes. If the Allies do have it, add one to all Allied that Allied gunnery and torpedo. If the Japanese do have, okay, then you uh, subtract one from all Allied gunnery and torpedo strings. 
So we're going to subtract 1 from all allied gunnery and torpedo strings because they do not have the initiative. And so there, we'll just subtract 1 from any allied fire, but that will not occur until naval fire, um, naval phase, naval combat phase 3. All right. I'll get going here and try to wake up and figure out what I'm doing. <clears throat> you know, the more videos I make, the better I hope they are but it doesn't seem to work that way I have camera camera fright or something all right so we have three heavy cruisers and destroyer versus a heavy two lights and a destroyer well the victory conditions say that we have to sink the Allied transport, and Allies got to sink two of our units. So, I guess the point is to get through this first screen because the Allied transport will have to occur, uh, be brought in on the next on the next naval combat phase. Just gonna go ahead and use my hand; It'd be easier to flip these. see what I'm dealing with here strength wise <laughs> back in focus yeah kind of all right I can fire both uh, gunnery and torpedo this one looks like it's pretty good in both areas the Aoba and this mixed destroyer unit is going to be my best torpedo unit but not my best gunnery all right I think all of our fire will be directed at Portland has no torpedoes. The Atlanta class ships have no torpedoes. Fletcher class destroyers have torpedoes. Well, I'm not sure what it really matters then. I guess we'll take out an Atlanta class cruiser or try to. So our target will be. Those two units will attack that Atlanta class. Guess it doesn't really matter. Wait a minute, I'll find out a system here eventually. I know this is tor terribly boring, but okay. And these two will attack this class. This Atlanta. All right. Now yeah, that was extremely painful. Yeah, extremely dark too. What's going on with my lighting? Probably because I was leaning over the uh, lighting there a little bit. Well, anyway, you just have to trust me. They're there. Okay, so versus this Atlanta, this vessel is going to fire its uh, gunnery value of 5 and its torpedo value of 4 at that Atlanta. So, we're going to go on up to the uh, combat results uh, chart. Slowly, in vertigo vision. I know you probably can't see much from there. But trust me. Okay, so our value is gunnery is a 5 at short range. So I'm going to roll a d10, and the result is a 2. So what we will do is we will go across the top, modified strength of a 2, the di or actually modified strength of a 5, I'll keep up with things, and I rolled a 4 or 2. Okay, well, let's just pretend that I just woke up, which I just did. Okay, um, we have a gunnery of 5, and I rolled a 2, so we'll go down here to where the 2 is. And then we'll go all the way down this way, 
following this band until we come to this vertical column here and we're going to go all the way down until we get to let me pull this back maybe not get down here to short range versus naval cross referencing this value with the short range to naval naval gives us a value of 2 which come back over here to my uh, fantastic little display here see if any of that went back into focus or not it's hard to say um, gives us a damage value of 2 on the Atlanta class ship any damage on a vessel, naval vessel, reduces all of its values by one. So in this case, since this Atlanta light cruiser took two hits, all of its values, combat values, all that stuff will be reduced by one. Except for <coughs> um, its activation cost, which plays no part in this uh, scenario. So it's an aircraft that is now effectively zero. Gonna focus in for me. And on the back, its other values would be reduced by two. And its uh, steps have been reduced by two. So basically it has been uh, cut in half. That was just gunnery. Now we're going to fire the torpedoes. The torpedo strength is a 4. So I'm going to go back up here, roll on the 4 table, and see what I get. I roll a 0. Not good for them. Not good for the Americans. We go over here, we come down here. And let's see, short versus naval is a 2. So she takes 2 more hits and is uh, effectively sunk. So that knocks out one cruiser. Unfortunately, I allocated two ships to that. So the second one does not get to fire or attack. Yeah, looks like we're still kind of in focus. Okay. Then with that knowledge, I think on the second attack, uh, I think I'll keep things as they are. So... The Furutaka, Furutaka now fire on this other Atlanta class. I wish I remember their actual names from the battle, but I don't. <coughs> and it will use, man, that's very dark. It will use first its gunnery of a three. Now let's see, what was my optional rules again? That the Japanese have strategic initiatives, subtract one from all allied gunnery. Okay. So on the three column, we roll a five, which is a miss. Okay, torpedo strength is a two. So we'll roll again. Got a zero on the two. That's going to be probably one hit. Torpedo. Actually, it's a two hit. So the result is two hits on this Atlanta class. Why even bother with these uh, tweezers sometimes? Okay, then we'll take the second ship, which is a mixed destroyer unit. I think they only had like one destroyer, the Japanese did, but I couldn't find the exact class, so I just chose the mixed one. Probably should have cut some of the values down, but I didn't. All right, hopefully that's in focus. It is going to fire... Uh, Let's fire its guns. They're just going to dash in with guns. Their strength, gunnery strength at short is a 2. Rolled a 4 on the 2. That's going to be no effect. And now I'm going to roll the torpedo strength of a 5. Got it. Rolled a 2 on the 5. That is going to be... This is torpedoes, too. That's going to be 2 more hits. And that will sink this other Atlanta class. 
So in the first naval combat phase, two allied uh, ships have been sunk. Unfortunately, this does nothing for the Japanese <coughs> victory conditions at the moment. And with that, we will probably close out naval combat phase one. And we will proceed to naval combat phase two shortly. Okay, here we are, naval combat display. Um, it's naval combat phase two. Once again, the allies do not get to return fire or initiate fire of any kind versus a Japanese player. I went ahead and allocated, I brought on four more allied units or added two actually to replace the two that were sunk. And I've allocated the Japanese vessels versus I've allocated them to uh, th their allied targets. Um, the Aoba and the mixed destroyer unit will take on Portland. The uh, Tenaru and the Furutaka will take on the New Orleans class ship. And the Tal yeah, Talbert, yeah, right. The Yabari and the Takeo will take on the Brooklyn class light cruiser, which, like I said, was actually a, a St. Louis, I believe it was. Um, class ship but I don't have that in this uh, in this counter mix in the game I should mention that in pairing off attackers versus um, defenders or you know side with the initiative versus the non-initiative uh, player the unit on the right here will be the uh, first unit that fires and then this unit will be the second unit and so on and so forth. <clears throat> Once the allies get to um, return or engage in combat in naval combat phase three I'll do pretty much the same thing just to let you know that when I'm rolling dice and indicating who's who that's what's going to happen so against this uh, Portland heavy cruiser we are going to fire with this ship right here we're going to fire both guns and torpedoes and I think in most every case I'll fire the guns first and then the torpedoes if I do not indicate otherwise. So we have a three strength gunnery and we'll go ahead and roll the die on that. Rolled an eight. I'm going to tell you now that that is a miss. Now we're going to fire the torpedoes which is only a two. Hey I rolled a two. Two on the two looks like one. Let's see, one hit um, on the torpedo combat table. So she takes one hit. Now the second ship will also make its attack. It has a gunnery of two. So fire guns. Rolls a zero. These dice are um, pro-Japanese at the moment. Uh, let's see, what did I say? She has a strength of two, a zero. We will follow, follow the line down to torpedo combat. And it looks like a hit, a two hit. Two hits, so that's gonna be three total. We'll find a three here. Now, she's one short of being a cripple. I would need uh, four in order to make her a cripple. That I do not have. So, at the moment, she has knocked down three by all of her factors, which will render her pretty much useless in the upcoming combat. Um, let me see something. Let me check on something here a minute. Less than zero. Counter must roll zero or higher. Okay, I think that makes sense. Not sure. Those are asterisks. Okay, possible critical hits. Well, anyway. What are the rules on possible critical hits? Anytime a zero is rolled, conducting combat, 
uh, or two consecutive zero fours. A critical hit occurs, immediately roll the die again and refer to the critical hit table. Now I think a couple of those, well this last one actually, uh, I rolled a zero. So I guess we'll roll and look at the critical hit uh, portion, I guess, on the critical hit table. Never did that before. So anyway, back against the Portland, uh, the last ship rolled a zero, so we will roll on the critical hit table. Roll the nine. She takes three additional hits and is sunk. So the Portland is sunk. I'll just go ahead and remove it. So another ship goes down, another allied ship goes down. Okay, now we'll resolve these two versus this New Orleans class. I have a gunnery of a three at short range. Roll to five, that's gonna be a miss. And I have a torpedo strength of two at short range. Roll to four, that's gonna be a miss. So this New Orleans class ship survives. Now these two are going to go up against this uh, Brooklyn class light cruiser. We have a gunnery strength of a five on the first on the first ship. Roll to one. Roll to one. It's going to take it down to there. Looks like it's well. Let's see. Combat strength of five. Roll to one. It's the blue line. We come down. Short range. Looks like two hits. So we scored two hits on the New Orleans. Guess I didn't have to uh, make the modification that I was going to make. I was going to make, or I was going to do a kind of a house rule that all Japanese torpedo hits do two points of damage um, due to surprise and everything. But I don't think I have to do that. It looks like they're handling themselves pretty well. Okay, back here we have uh, the next ship to attack is the one of one with the gunnery of one, so I need a zero or one. I rolled a seven, that's not going to do it. And now the torpedo value of a two. Rolled a three, that's not going to do it. And the New Orleans escapes this turn. All right, final battle these two Japanese naval vessels versus a Brooklyn light uh, cruiser. First one would be a gunnery of five. Rolled a seven, it's going to be a miss. And a torpedo factor of four. Rolled an eight. That's a miss. Okay, and the final ship is going to be a one and a one. One gunnery factor. Rolled a six and one torpedo factor. Rolled a two, so that's basically a miss. Yes. And this ends the second naval combat phase. On the third one, we place all remaining ships in the display. And both sides get to um, fire with all their units. I'll be back in a moment. And we'll resolve the final, um, final naval combat phase. Okay, here we are for the naval combat phase three, the last combat phase in the naval combat cycle. Um, I probably should have bid or withdraw on a couple of Japanese ships, but I want to make sure that the amphibious transport is destroyed. So, I pretty much allocated all Japanese ships to attack the amphibious transport. Since they, you know, you can pick any target and apply any number of ships towards it. Um, and once this is resolved, I will go ahead and do the allied portion of the phase and they will see which ones that they want to uh, attack. So, we'll start this out. I need six hits to destroy this unit. That's why I allocated so many units to, uh, in case I have a string of bad die rolls, like I did on the second naval phase. So, we're going to start off. We're going to start off with gunnery of a five versus the amphibious transport unit. Roll to one on the five. That's going to swing us down the blue line to the blue column. Short range is a two. 
Let me go down there again. So that was a five. Let me go down again. Okay, roll the one on the five. Okay, it was blue, and we'll go down, and it is a two. So we scored two hits on the amphibious assault ship. Now we're going to fire torpedoes with a strength of four. The same ship. Roll the nine. That's not going to do it. So he's done firing. The others will just move up in line. We have a torpedo a gunnery strength of two on this unit. Roll the zero on the two. Looks like that's going to score just a one. So that brings it up to three. It's halfway destroyed. And we will fire. What did I fire? Torpedoes? No, those are guns. I'm going to fire torpedoes with a strength of five. Roll the three. Uh, five. Roll the three. We fall the yellow column down to torpedoes. That's two more hits. So that's five hits on the amphibious unit. We're lucky enough to have a five. There we go. All right. Well, we're looking at possible overkill here, but the victory conditions do state that I must kill the amphibious unit. It doesn't matter how many other allied ships we kill. Away. We went out of focus here. Hopefully that other part was in focus. And we're still out of focus. Alrighty here. What's your deal? There we go. It looks like it's better. Camera's camera's uh, blurriness looks about like my eyes without glasses. All right, we have a combat strength of three going in on the amphibious unit. I think the amphibious unit was parked at Guadalcanal, and it was unloading, and then they were pulling it out again, or or redirecting some traffic or something when the Japanese came in and uh, chased off the American patrol. And, but I don't think they went in to sink the uh, amphibious units, if, I'm, if my spotty history is correct. Um, I think they feared that aircraft carriers were in the vicinity, so the Japanese commander broke off the attack before sinking the uh, amphibious units at Guadalcanal. At least that's my understanding. Um, those of you who wish to look up the real thing can do so and correct me on that. Okay, what am I doing here? Gunnery, strength of three. Roll to five, nothing. Torpedo strength, two. Roll to three, that's going to be nothing. So, hopefully that won't mess up the focus too bad. Okay, we come in. Gunnery strength of three. Roll the three on the three. That is going to produce, what am I doing here? Gunnery strength versus shore range. Three and a three, it looks like it's gonna take one hit at short range. One hit, she sunk. So far, the Japanese have uh, met their victory conditions. Now the allies We'll get to fire back, and I'll be back in a moment when I get that set up. Okay, here we are, Naval Combat Phase 3, the final combat phase of this combat cycle. I've gone ahead and allocated the Allied ships for their portion of this phase. They do now get to fire back. They will fire, since it's at night time, um, we'll subtract one from all their gunnery and torpedo strengths. So they've uh, they've been allocated against their targets. Two allied ships will engage the Tenru, which only has four uh, steps, whatever, hit points, whatever you want to call it. And then I've allocated two other ships versus the um, Yubari, 
which only has two steps. So their goal is to sink those two ships if at all possible, therefore, therefore denying the Japanese their uh, victory and defeating the victory conditions. So, got to remember that they're all lowered by one. In this case, we're going to start at the top, go left to right, and the bottom left to right. And uh, we shall commence. So the first one has a gunnery strength of two reduced to one. It rolls a three, which will be a miss. It has a torpedo factor of four reduced to three, night combat. Aha, but it rolls a one on the three column. Torpedoes. Follow the yellow band down to a torpedo combat. Ouch, scored a two. That's two hits on the tin room. Not looking good, however, there's only one more ship uh, capable of taking her out, and that only has a gunnery of four reduced to one for a three. So we'll go ahead and fire it. And it's a nine, misses. Well, it looks to me like the Japanese will win the scenario because there's no way that the Allies can sink two ships. But it looks like they might get the Yubari, so let's go ahead and roll that one out. They have down here. Are we in focus still? Oh, yes. Um, the Allied ship will fire with a one gunnery on the Yubari. Roll the two, so that's going to be a miss. He has a torpedo strength of four minus one, so that's a three. And roll a four, that's a miss. Well, let's see if this uh, heavy cruiser, which has been damaged, can do anything. Its gunnery is a five, but it's reduced by two because of the two hit marker on it. So it's three minus one for nighttime combat. So it is now uh, five minus two, three, two. It rolls a seven and it misses. So this uh, result is semi-historical in a Japanese victory. The Japanese managed to take out the amphibious assault ship. Well, I guess I should put it more in focus here. And they sunk. Let's see, they sunk. It's like three light cruisers, or heavy cruiser and three light cruiser, or two light cruisers. So zoom in here just a little bit more for the sake of completion I guess a little bit closer I guess pardon the shadows and the highlights and everything else so it's uh, pretty much a decisive Japanese victory and um, I guess that's all I can really say at the moment I'd have to look up the history of the battle again to determine exactly how many ships and of what kind the uh, Japanese did sink that night, um, but uh, in this scenario they managed to take out three fairly large allied ships plus the amphibious ships which will historically most likely have an effect, well ahistorically will have an effect on the uh, Guadalcanal landings and etc. So with that I'm going to call this video a wrap and hopefully I will get to sometime in the near future, which could be six months to a year from now, I'll try to do the first invasion of Wake Island, then the invasion of Burma, and finally the battle for Imphal Kohima, which a lot of those are going to be land-type land, uh, land type battles. And after that, we go on into battle scenarios, like the relief of Wake Island, the battle of the Coral Sea, Midway, Eastern Solomons, blah, blah, blah. So, anyway, until next time, take care.